All right, we're going to create a new document in Photoshop, and what we're going to learn today is how to take an image and place it inside of text, and this is a nice little effect that I think you'll like to use. First thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a new blank document or a blank canvas, and we're going to make sure that it's set at the default size, so if you look here at the sizes, you can set it to your default Photoshop size, and that'll be 7 by 5 Let's go ahead and create that. We'll say OK. And we're not going to title it. We're just going to go ahead and open it up. We'll title it later at the end. First thing you're going to notice is that we have a blank white layer in our uh, layers palette. And we're going to double click on this lock here with our cursor. And that's going to let us open it up here and not have any interference from the lock. If we don't unlock it, we're not going to be able to use this canvas the way we want to. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to open up another document with the image that I've already selected off the internet and saved to my desktop. So let's go ahead and open that. And when we open it, we're going to go to our desktop setting here and we're going to find the image, double click on it, and there it is. It's open. Now it's much smaller than the canvas that we want to place it on, so we're going to go ahead and enlarge this image. So let's go to image and we're going to scroll down to image size and now we're going to make this the same size and we can see here that the blank white canvas is seven inches wide about five inches tall or in height so let's go ahead and select the width and set it to seven inches so I'm going to place seven in there and you'll notice that the height has now changed it corresponds with the seven because these two are linked together and because of that link when you uh, type a new width in or height, they both change at the same time together. Let's go ahead and say OK. And you'll notice that now our image is much larger. It's now the same size or very close to the same size as the blank white canvas that we created. And the only thing that we need to do is unlock this because if we don't, we won't be able to drag it onto the blank canvas. So let's double click like we did before, say OK and now we can take our move tool and drag this over to the blank canvas. If we hadn't unlocked it we wouldn't be able to do that. So let's go ahead and drag it over to the canvas and notice I get a nice little gray image here outline that lets me see where I'm going to place it and there we go, I'm going to drop it in there. Now we're going to go ahead and get rid of this image. And you're probably asking yourself why do I want to get rid of that? Well it's not set up the same as what we've done here and this is better because we have a blank white layer on the bottom layer and now we have our image on the second layer and that's much better for what we're going to do. Now I'm going to take my text tool and I'm going to set it anywhere on this layer. Okay, And so let's go ahead and uh, take the cursor and set our text. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use all caps here and type in the word sunset. And now that I've typed it in, you'll notice that as soon as I set my cursor here, I got another new layer, and it's on top of the previous layer. That happens with every layer that you create. Whatever layer is selected, the next layer that you create will be on top of the one that's selected. So now I've got my type tool on top of the image layer, and that's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and uh, select the, uh, the, the sunset type that I've I've typed in here and we're going to use our move tool and as soon as I do that you'll notice that uh, I get the transform tool around the outside of the image and the reason why that comes up and the reason why we need it is I've got this little box here that says show transform tools or controls and notice if it's not selected the controls go away well I want these tools so I've got to have it selected that way I can resize this image Okay, and I'm going to click and drag this into a position I want so I can resize it. I want to make it much larger so that I can set as much of this image into this text as I can as I possibly can. It'll make it look much better and much more be much more effective. And notice I'm going outside this canvas area to drag my letters, so that's fine. Just keep dragging until you get it placed where you want. And now that I've got it placed where I want, I can go ahead and create a transparency layer that will uh, attach these these layers together. So before I can do that though, because I stretch this text with the transform control, I have to apply what I just did. So I'm going to go to File Menu, and I'm going to go to my Save or my Save As, either one. It doesn't matter which one, and I'm going to uh, apply that. 
effect that I just did when I stretched it. Now that I've applied it, it's going to want me to uh, type in a name for this uh, project that I'm creating, but I don't want to do that yet. So let's just go ahead and say save, and I'm going to uh, select the OK button here, and now I'm ready to create my transparency layer that's going to attach these together so that I can create my text inside of this, or take my image and set it inside of this text. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go to my select menu and scroll down to the bottom where it says load selection and now you can see it wants to create a transparency for me and that's exactly what we want I'm going to say or select OK and now you can see I've got the crawling ant so you know that it's been selected and that this is active now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this layer and the way that I do that, the type layer that is the way that I do that is I'm going to turn off the eye here. So I'm going to select it and get rid of that. And then you see the eye disappeared when I select it here. That means that I have uh, turned it off. But I can still see the crawling ants, which is good because I want to select layer number one or the image layer. And now it's active and I can now place my text inside of, excuse me, I can now take my image and place it inside of the text. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a copy of this layer one or this image layer. So let's go to the layer menu and we're going to uh, scroll down just here to new and then over to layer via copy and as soon as I do that you'll notice I got another new layer in my layer palette and I'm going to turn off layer number one or the image layer with this eye here so I'm going to select it and turn it off and now you can see that I have text inside of my or I have my image inside of my text and I'm gonna quickly put a background drop shadow on this to make it look a little more effective a little more nice a little more professional so let's go ahead and make a drop shadow so let's go to our layer menu and I'm gonna scroll down to layer style and simply select drop shadow and as soon as I do that my presets in this menu are going to apply right to this and you can already see that I have a drop shadow but it's not the color or the size that I want so let's change that I'm going to select this little black box here. This is my color menu. And now I get my color picker. As soon as I select that, I'm going to select a dark blue. And as soon as I select here in the rainbow, I can select any color. I selected the dark blue. I'm going to take my picker and select a nice dark blue. You can see my current color is black. That's my current drop shadow. And now I'm going to select a new color and say OK. And now I've got a nice blue drop shadow, but it's still not big enough and it still doesn't look nice enough. So let's change these three little slider bars here. I'm going to move this out just a little bit. And you can see as I move the slider bar, the shadow moves. So you can see what's happening as you're creating it. And that's a nice thing because you can see what you want. And now I'm going to uh, move the size. And this is going to make this a little more fuzzy. It's going to give it a little bit more of a distance and a little more 3D look to it. And then the spread is going to make... Uh, the slider bar here is going to make it look a little more dense and we're done and let's see what we have let's select OK and now we have a really nice effect it looks great uh, if you have any questions email me or ask me in class how to do this if you get lost or you need any help uh, good luck to you and I hope that this is a fun lesson for you